So the next chapter of Chiboy comes in the puzzle of Yechal Moshe es Pnei Hashem Rokav. And in the English, we're on page 212. In the Hebrew, on page Kofiud Dali. Uh, every so often we turn page, let me know so I can announce the page. Chiloi hu kamamar kosov. What is chiloi? Chiloi is, as the verse says, Vayichal Moshe es Pnei Hashem Rokav, Lama Hashem. And Lama Hashem Yichra Pecha, right? Why are you, Hashem, are you upset with the Jewish people? <clears throat> so... So, so Moshe appeals to God after the horrible chait of the Egil, and that's where Moshe then learns from a Baruch Hu, the 13 mitos uh, harachamim, the 13 attributes of, of mercy that we can use anytime we're in crisis. Mar Brachos Davlon Beis tells us Shekama Ofanim Echaisa Tfilaso Shemoshe. What was the nature of Moshe's prayer? Of Alapo Alpi Shat, simply speaking, Yerush Shaisik Tfilos of Yerach Tainot Yusim. The Gemara has a lengthy discussion about Moshe's prayer, but the simple nature of Moshe's prayer was that it was an appeal. It was an appeasement of God. We're trying to appease God. Uh, Moshe was trying to appease God through the prayer. God, why are you uh, Why are you angry with the Jewish people? Why should the Egyptians say uh, that, uh, that, that, that you... That, that you have abandoned, you took them out of Egypt just to die in the desert. Is that what you want our enemies to say? Zechor la Abraham. Remember Abraham, came not sinu harbe, many types of uh, things, statements that we make, which all are about panim, to appease God, to make our case. We're basically making our argument here, right? It's logical, it's emotional, but it's, 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 it's an appeasement. It's an effort to try to get God to see our side. Eo has the same thing. To appease and to appeal to God's better, be, uh, better judgment. And as this is written in the many Gemaras, we find many prayers that are in this nature. By the Gemara in Tainus, which we're studying on Dafyomi, is filled with stories of sages who appeal to God to make it rain, whether it's Choni Ama'agel, Choni's grandson, or many other in between, all of them appeal to HaKadosh Baruch Hu to get Hashem to try to see our side. <coughs> so, Chayin Eitzel Chana, find this by Chana. Aina, Vivona She'olam, Master of the World, Hamasha Barata, Lo Barata, Davar, Echad Levatala. God, everything you created, you created nothing for naught. You created everything for a reason. And so, <clears throat> so, excuse me, Hannah makes a great argument. She says, God, you created so many creatures, so many people. I always think uh, you look at all these people in your life, you walk down the street, most people are extras in your life, right? You're like the main character, like Truman Show. You're the main person. And everyone else is sort of like an extra in, in the cast, a castmate in your story. They pop into your life, this, they come, I see them on Tuesdays or I see them here. I see them but they're not really, like, it can't be the whole story's about them. It's really about me. Everyone else is sort of an extra in my story, which is amazing that everyone thinks that way, right? Like, like it's kind of, like, humbling to realize that. And then if you don't think that way, either you're a humble person or you have serious, uh, serious um, self-esteem issues. But most people walk around thinking that they are the center of their own life. Anyway, so, um, so it says that, so he, so he says that, that uh, that Hannah made a following appeal. She said, God, all of the children, all the people you created, all these main character characters and castmates and all the extras, right? All these people, and you can't give me one son, right? You can't, you can't, uh, I'm a big fan of Bob Ross, painter. Oh, in your world, you have a little tree here. Like, if you want, add another tree, God, just add another person. How hard is it for you? One child, so I ask. It's a simple appeal. It's an appeal that I know you're capable of doing it, God, so just do it, right? And Nike took that uh, slogan. <laughs> who is like this nation? Who knows how to appease his God? And we know uniquely how God is appealed to. We know how to talk to Hashem. We have a very special way about us. Um, who can 
go into the secrets of God to know the depth of his will. How does God appeal? How is God, do you want the Hebrew? Uh, how, how is God reached? Hare Nemar says in Yeshayahu in Isaiah, paragraph 55, for the heavens are higher than the earth. This we read this on every fast day in the afternoon at Mincha. I know because they always give me the Hatar to read when I'm starving. So, my, just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so too my, Hashem's ways are higher than my ways, and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. And who knows how to appeal to God? So, in other words, the Jewish people have a special description about them, that they know how to reach God. They know how to appeal to his better side. They know how to make the right arguments. Every lawyer is different, but certain lawyers are known. They really know how to put up the right arguments, how to stop the bad ones. We know, as a nation, how to talk to God. We have the formula down. And the formula includes basically making compelling, a compelling rational, ex- rational argument like Hannah made. It's so hard for you to give me one child. Look at all the other people you made. Clearly, they're not all, didn't all work out well. I can't have one child. Or Moshe Rabbeinu, who makes an argument. Why should the Egyptians claim that you brought us out of Egypt just to kill us? It's going to look bad for you. It's not my, it's not, do it, do it for me, do it for you. And then what do we say in Slichos over again? Leman Cho, do it for you. Lola money, not for me. So, is it simply when uh, Abraham uh, made an appeal for the people of Saddam? Right. And Moshe, the appeal that did not work. For we, Israel. Yes. Yeah. Let me just go and stand there yeah. for a minute. Right. So Vayichal is the language by the the um, the Chet Ha'egel, whereas last time it was Tachanunim. That was Ve'et Hanan. So that was the previous chapter. Uh, it's an appeal, but it's a, it's a different, he's using, according to the author, Pedro Pincus, he's, he's not, he's saying that uh, that Hanan was in Moshe had his failed ask for a free gift, whereas this Achilu is a more powerful, a more compelling argument. So I think we'll explore it. I'm sure it'll explain what, what the difference is a little bit. I've never read this safer, so I'll know, I'm sure, but but uh, yeah, yeah, I'm sure there's a difference. But I hear what you're saying. Like his argument wasn't necessarily compelling by let me into Israel, it's just please let me into Israel. Right? Sounds like an appeal, but but this one sounds like it has like a logical bend to it, like a logical, uh, like you're making putting a case together, you know. Oh, could be. So it could be the difference is that a chiloy, as you're saying, is something specific that Hanan maybe is not. I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Okay, let's go. The chen kol seder tefila. Everything that we do in prayer. By the way, we're done with this. Someone should make a, a bookmark, a cheat sheet with all of these. Explain what they are. Be cool. Every Seder Tila that Hashem, that the Hashem has established, Milas Ruch Kocham Viyidu, and they knew, Heyach Tzarek Lubakish. They knew exactly how to ask ask for something. You have to know how to ask. Velo Mil Ma'avi Atila Sen Tzarechenu. What words to bring us to prayer? And, our, and to get our needs. Right? I always find that people want something. You know, if, if you can ask the same thing, but people frame it in certain ways, nobody says yes. So one of the things that we were writing a letter to a teacher for, for something for one of our kids, and, you know, it's a part of asking to take a look at the email. I don't know if we're going to get our way, but, but the email had a lot of it's not fair in it. I said, take this out. Because you don't want to, people don't want to hear what's fair and what's not. You may be right, but nobody ever responds all to it's fair. It's not fair. Uh, I put it, which is interesting that I'm correcting it because usually when she wants something, she gets when I say, I don't get it, but it is still. Right. Seven 
There, there's a great, there's a great. What you say? Sorry. Right. I. Oh, you should say that. It's funny because the, there's a two, two things about that. One thing is one time the someone wrote a letter to, uh, to the Rebbe, and it was like I, I you know I'm I'm suffering this and I don't like this and, this, and the Rebbe sent back the letter circling the word I eight times just sent it back to him. But but in general, what you feel is it's important to express like that as opposed to a, right. Exactly, exactly. Um, so, so there was a there was a clip. I think it was every now and then. Uh, I think it was either Aisha Torah or one of these has like these. Uh, the, they take funny clips from sitcoms and shows. and They kind of put it up there to make an important lesson. So they, there was one that was circulating uh, from uh, the formerly defamed, and now apparently he's re, he's he's doing shows again and selling out Magnolia like and Louis C.K. So in, in one of his shows, Louis is, um, is talking to his daughters and uh, uh, she, uh, I guess, the, I'll send you the clip. It's really, really powerful. He carves out a mango and puts it on a, a fork. And, and the one daughter says, not fair. How come she got a, a, a mango pop? And he's like, I don't understand what that means. Like, what do you mean it's not fair? It's like, it's not fair. She got one. I want it. Well, this is, there's only one and she got it. She's lucky and you're not particularly lucky right now. So she's like, but it's not fair. He's like, I don't understand what that means. What do you mean it's not fair? And he goes to this philosophical question. He's like, listen, the only time you ever want to want to uh, worry about what's about what, what about about what your neighbor has is to make sure they have enough food in their bowl. Now you and then he gets lost this whole like philosophical debate. She's like, so he's like, but it's not fair. It's not fair. So finally he goes, okay, fine. She's like, but I get a chocolate something or other. He's like, okay, fine. And make sure your sister gets one too. He gives up and he just. He just the whole he, he stops fighting, but it's such a profound um, idea about our rights and what we get and that this because you don't get what everyone else gets, and you have to be okay with that, and they have to be uh, sensitive to other people. It's okay. Every tefila that the Anche Knesset Gadol established, Alpi Godel Milas Cham, based on the greatness of the spirit of their of their holiness. They knew how to ask. That's why they framed the sitter. Sitter is, is specifically certain words, certain compositions, certain um, sukim from Tehillim assembled into paragraphs. How wondrous we should be when we consider the sitter is not just a jumble of random verses. Anyone could have done that, but they actually... But with, with great wisdom and Ruach HaKodesh, which Gazzagazzagol had, which is almost a, a notch below prophecy, they assembled the sitter to calculate the Omak Inyana and the wonders of hidden secrets that are hidden in the sitter. Ella Rak Kavu, but um, but they established themselves the Dorot Seder Bakashot, the order of requests, Shiyalu Lurotsmafana, that uh, that goes before God. Like, forgive us our father. which is an appeal. If you want to ask forgiveness for your sins, to throw in the word avinu is very clever. Forgive us, father. Oh, wait a minute, I'm your father. Wait, that's a big difference. Remember when, y- when Yitzchak and Avram go up on the mountain and he's ignoring him, he's basically walking up the mountain and he, he calls him the nar, the boy. Finally says, but father, father he forces him to look at him and he says you're my father i'm your son and we're going to do this you better know that i'm your son and finally he says Bene. he goes you know hashem will show us what to offer my son but we force god into that dynamic into that relationship <laughs> when you forgive this is the reason that we came before hashem to forgive the sin uh the, the sins that he forgives and he Every order of prayer. Asher tik nu chazal. And chazal established. Be godo kenjasam asher be otsam maila Torah tam. In the great wisdom from the essence of their Torah, yadu as kol darche Hashem, they knew uh, the ways of God. Yadu ech lefaiso maratzon esplach. They knew what what talks to God, and therefore they knew what fra- phrases to employ in the sitter. So to understand the sitter now is a, an intentional composition. Of chiluim, of appeals to Hashem, specifically to 
to uh, to connote and to get on his good side. Okay, any questions? Yeah. Yeah, no, I just want to say, you know, the, uh, the idea of um, it's not fair, like it's fair, you know, all of those things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The idea that the fairness may be on a level that seemingly you believe in that, that you mean so So in other words, it could be the answer is it is fair, it is but you fair, don't but, but you don't know what fair means. Know, right. right. We don't yeah. know what what is that's, going to be in the world fair. Right. Right. Well, right, that's a possibility. Um, so I, I get a little bit of, uh, I, I always think that way when I think about, and you know, people have certain deficiencies and ailments and things like that, that actually lead them to make certain decisions that are best for them or, or I don't, I, I'll give you a little example in my life. And I have no idea why this, I love lemon, like lemon things I love. I don't, I don't know where it came from. Maybe my mom used to make lemon meringue pie. I don't know what it is. But things that are lemon flavor, lemon drinks, lemon nana, it's like my favorite thing in the world. So I, at some point in seventh grade, so I had this impacted um, salivary gland. And every time I get a cold or every time season change, things like it gets really, it blows up and it hurts. And, and when I went through all this, all these various clinics and things like that to look at it, and they, check, they put an iodine through the thing to see how to drain it. And they said, here's what you gotta do. You gotta suck on lemon and tart things. So that's it. That's it. So I realized that what I love is actually the best thing for me, right? So it's interesting how it works. Now, sometimes, by the way, what you do want is not good for you, right? Like the opposite is true. The, the B'nai Israel, Mitzrayim, they, they asked, they said, God, how can you take us out of Egypt? We had onions and cucumbers and watermelons. They're like, like I, all right, I like all those things in different, like I like a cucumber on my tuna sandwich. I like onions and everything. And, I, you know, they're fried and I enjoy watermelon. So why, why can't I have those things? Well, turns out that a cutter's barkle thought they were bad for the people who were pregnant, right? So he withheld them. But it seems to us from our vantage point that it was, it was terrible, I didn't have it. But that matzah was better for your health. It was better for your reality. So sometimes, and all the people, not everyone, but all the people who throughout the last few years have rediscovered things in their own family, in their own lives and talents and things like that, that, that just, they, they, they found because necessity brought it out. Or that, so you can't afford gas now because it's five dollars a gallon. So maybe walk a little bit, you'll be healthier. Or maybe all right, take public transportation. Well, maybe maybe it'll help the, the world a little bit, you know. Or things like that that that, that we don't discover that we have to discover that are going to be drawn out from a, a matzava reality that you don't know yet. Yeah. Get a question? Oh, if we're not. We're in an auction. You're going to buy a lot of things. Okay. Ine lichora nistarim So again. Sorry, the kasha. I, I skipped. Sorry, we're up to now. Um, uh, he says, really, in truth, if the claim that we're making for God is a real claim, why do we have to make the claim? Is it true that God knows exactly what we need? God knows exactly what it is that, 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 that. That, that helps us, that guides us, that provides us with exactly what we need. And therefore, in a time of therefore, why do I have to make a claim? So why do I have to make a claim, which is either based on truth or in fact, sometimes based on a lie, like a compelling argument. Like we want to appeal to God. We want to ask Hashem to intervene on our behalf for something that we, that, 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 that we deem necessary. But if a cutter's particle, and this is the question on prayer in general, Hashem provides everything we need. So why do we have to ask him for anything? Is that how it's framing the question there? Am I, uh, am I framing it the right way in yeah. English? Okay. So if, I just want to make sure that the English is matching what I'm saying. Oh, let me take a quick look. Should be. Okay. So it's the top of page. Um, Two, uh, bottom of 214, top page 215. Yeah, so there seems to be no need for us to present the argument to him. And on the other hand, if our argument is found lacking, what will it help to, to assert a claim that is not true? Maybe like, why would we ask for somebody to say it's best for me? If we are getting what's, if, if, if he knows exactly what's best for us anyway. So what do we have to do? What do, what, what do we have to intervene? So the MS, Eina, Dabar, Kain, Be'inian, Kibosh, Matsin, Bokama, Kalei, Bito, Shalachun, Ben, Chalver, Sichin, there's a story, it's both in Babakama and Tainas, it's a very sad story. 
His name is Nechunya, the the, uh, the the digger of wells. He was a well digger. But uh, what happened is his, his daughter fell into a, a pit. And they told him Mendoza, and they said that Nechunya's daughter is in a pit. And he said, how could it be? This guy dug pits for the whole community so they could have water. And now his own daughter should fall in the pit? That doesn't seem to be very fair. That doesn't seem to be um, a, a rational approach if you were God, right? So, and, and by the way, yes, it's true, his daughter was rescued, but his son ended up dying of thirst. And this guy provided water. This guy was literally the person who built the water towers for the community, right? And then that, that, that's Zutaros, Zutaros, they say that's their, that's their effort and that's the reward. Kasha Shahare Taina Zu Shadavar Nishtarvo Osatzadik Kasha Bozaro. How could it be that the one thing that that person expended himself for, that his own children should suffer? Taina Tsuma, that's a great claim. King Lama Mez Benobatama. So then why did his son die through famine, through, through, uh, through thirst? And the, the Sefer Shita Mikubetsis, which is a reshone on the Gemara, some of them, about, about 10 Mesechites or so, have a commentary called the Shita Mikubetsis. It's a separate, a separate Sefer you buy. I have two copies and a couple of Mesechites. If you guys want, you can take my like, Subos and a few other Mesechites. Um, it's a nice print one also. So the Shita Mikubetsis says, Marty Klomar Hashamati Dover Zeh, with Nay, because Baruch Abayim Dover Shin Steyer. Is because Baruch Abayim he says, what was saying in the Gemara was, I, I, I made this claim before God, and God agrees with me. It's not fair that that uh, that this person who was most nefesh for water for the whole tzibur, should have his children suffer through either falling in wells or, or of famine, or of, 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 of a thirst. And I made this claim to God, and God agreed with me. Turns out that God agrees with the righteous. So when, so when, um, when um, Hanina Bendosa made the claim about his friend, uh, God was masking. God agreed. She came to our masking as far as Zikim. She mace benovit sama, far mace for Bichanina. And when his son had died of of uh, thirst, Rabbi Hanina had already died. Okay, I just, he's not giving the background. I have to explain the background of these Gemaras. There's a lot of Agatha that he's alluding to here. I'm going to go into the story. So he says that the answer in that question was Rabbi Hanina had already died, so he wasn't there to appeal, to make the appeal. In other words, Rabbi Hanina was the compelling case that his children should have ample water. When Hanina died, the zechos that he had brought about, the merit he brought about, no longer had existed for the children. That's, that's kind of hard, hard to think about, though, that we can't appeal to ourselves. Yeah. You need to have a body, you have to have a body, you have to you have to have a body, 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 you Oh no, it was the Hanina died. Hanina had died already. That's what it says. Yeah, the Itzadik died. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. Why why is his merit not enough? Oh, we also but in other words, I think what he's saying is like this, that maybe it fits in what he's saying. It's true. So he's building the question up. Let's we start with the question. The question was, doesn't God give us what we deserve and what right anyway? And here in the Gemara it tells a story that the only reason that the children would have been rescued was for someone to assemble the argument that is a compelling logical argument to God. But when the person who knew how to make the argument, namely the Tzadik of Bichanina, who knew how to compose the prayers, who knew how to make that logical argument to God about, about Nechun Yechov Rasichin, the, the, well, the well digger, and to say to God, the well digger deserves his children to be alive. When that person who knew how to make the claim died, no one's there to make the claim anymore, and therefore the children weren't saved. So what we're saying, and we're, we're, I think we're adding to the question, we're building the question that he's creating is why should it take the person who knows that to compose the prayer? Why doesn't God just look at everyone and say, what do you deserve? Why do you have to intervene with the right words, the right claims? Right? I wish you look like you're about to ask a question. You're, you're intrigued. I have you on the edge of your seat. Okay. Kind of, 
there are two times I would look like that in class when I was young. One is when I was intrigued, and two is when I was about to fall asleep. And I had to be like this, please stay awake, please stay awake, and I need toothpicks for my eyes, right? I feel like if we didn't ask for things, though, and we just said, well, we get what it is, it's much more robotic. Well, it's robotic. It's robotic, uh, uh, unless you can do the fact that you had to do something. You had to earn it. You had to deserve it. So that's that. There, there's the merit also. In other words, we're question is why is merit not enough? Why is merit and and needs not enough? Why do we need someone who can actually make an argument? Like God doesn't understand the argument. He doesn't get the logical uh, thing that the logical argument that a person who spends his life digging wells for others, deserves that his children should have water? Right. Like, we, like, why is that not obvious to God? Why do we need Hanina to make the taina? Then he says another question. And the other question is, is based on our Rebbe Mayer. Okay, so here's a little background. Rebbe Mayer, who is the, the last editor of the Mishnayas, that's why when we have an anonymous Mishnah, we say Stam Mishnah Rebbe Mayer. Rebbe Mayer's name means Mayer to illuminate. He, he actually had a, uh, a Rebbe named Alicia ben Avuya. Alicia ben Avuya was one of the four who went over into Pardes. There's a book, a fictional book about his life called As a Driven Leaf. You may have seen the book As a Driven Leaf. It's like, you know, fictional Talmud stories. It's, it's really good. It's actually the bestseller in the Jewish world years ago. Um, it's not all true, uh, but there's Gemara and Chagi tells the story of Alicia ben Avuya. Alicia ben Avuya was one of the four greatest. Him, Rabbi Akiva, Ben Azai, and Ben Zoma all went into the Pardes. They went into the orchard. Now, what does that mean? They went. They had some divine Kabbalistic experience where, they, where the, the curtain was peeled back for a moment and they got to see what was really happening behind Oz. And they were, you know, don't pay attention to the man behind the curtain. They really saw behind the curtain. And they were all affected in a very, yeah. So, so they saw... And Gemara tells what they what 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 Elisha and Avuya saw. We'll get there in a moment. But Ben Zoma and Azai, I think Ben Azai dies. Ben Zoma uh, goes insane, or or vice versa. Rabbi Akiva comes out unscathed, and Elisha and Avuya becomes a heretic. <coughs> um, what he saw was an angel writing down the demerits and the merits of the Jewish people, and he thought that there were two Rishuyot. There was there was one in charge of the good people and one in charge of the bad people. And this made him lose his faith and become cynical about much that he believed in. And he didn't understand that, that angel was appointed by God and assigned for whatever, whatever it was he saw. So the Gemara goes on for like two pages describing all the terrible, rotten things he did. Could be even kill children. We don't even, it's part of the, it's a, it's a question. Whether he went and chopped up a, a bunch of academies of kids. It's not clear that he did that or as he thought of it. Right, but that's actually asserted in the Gemara. And um, okay, so that so there was one point when he was deciding to go. He was riding his uh, his animal, his horse or donkey, uh, a camel, up until the edge of the Tchum Shabbos. You can only travel two thousand animals beyond the limit of of, Sha- of city limits on Shabbos. And he was driving up to the limit, and Rabbi Meir was behind him, saying, "You can return." And he said, "Everyone told me Shuhu Banim Shovim, which is the verse." Return, repent, my children, repent. But he heard a voice, a divine voice says, Shubhubam Shobim Chutzme Acher, except for me. His nickname became Acher, the other one. Right? Like they won't even mention his name. Right, like Voldemort. Yeah. Oh. Oh, you said it. <laughs> so so uh so he was he was named as the other. Rabbi Mayor followed him and said, I can still learn Torah from him. And he followed him up until the edge. Of the of the trum, and he said, and he said, haven't you heard um, that um, that everyone can do chuba, uh, that you can do that everyone can do chuba but me? And and Acher says, you two can turn back. It's not too late. Right before he crossed over the line, it's a very that Remeir said to to Acher. In any event, the Gemara goes on and tells us that that he was Malamid Chos, and that in the merit of Rabbi Meir, smoke rose up and from his grave eventually from his rabbi's grave and eventually he was accepted in Chuva and Shemayim. Because when when Elijah Minhuya died, he was all good and all bad. And God didn't know what to do with him. He was like the he was both the most outstanding pupil and the worst person. So what do you do with a person who's like half Tzadik, half Rasha? That's Akher. 
So then finally, after a mayor died, and it's supposed to the student who believed in his rabbi, smoke rose from the grave. The mayor, by the way, his yurt site is on, um, is on Pesach Sheni, which is the holiday of second chances. There's a whole Torah there, Rav Tzadok HaKon points out. But that's why his yurt site is on, on and Rav Tzadok says that anytime the, the Gemara says, Acherim Omrim, others say, it's a mayor quoting, we are still quoting it to this day. Talk about the ability to quote. And beyond that, the Gemara and Gittin tells us that when Nero, the gen- Roman general, decided he was going to be Macha of Yushalayim, he shot an arrow in the east, west, north, south, every time it turned and went to Jerusalem. He said, oh, I'm the one who's going to destroy the Jews. And then he said to a child, children used to give over prophetic visions with verses, like they did in the Elijah of Gemara. It's a parallel. And the Gemara there says that, I'm condensing an hour-long shear into five minutes, where there says that the children said that Nero is going to be the one to destroy it's going to be Nero who's going to destroy Jerusalem, and Hashem's going to take vengeance against him. And when he heard that, he said, "I don't want to. I don't want God to take vengeance against me." And Nero left, and he converted to Judaism. And the Gemara then says, "And from him came Rabbi Meir." It's like the weirdest line. The Gemara says nothing more. So my Rabbi once said that he believes that that's a shot. Rabbi Meir is the one who believed in his Rabbi. Rabbi Meir believed in it. Like even when the cards are stacked up against you, right? You can still, you can still do chuba. Yeah, yeah. Well, but he converted to Judaism, so they, so of course, they paint him as a, as a madman. So, but, but the, um, so, so back to this Gemara, the back to this, this piece. He said that the derech of a kadosh baruch hu was So let's go back. So, um, okay. Similar to Mar Chagiga, the one I just told you about. Hayom Dabr Mesifta the Rakia, came Rabbi Meir when they used to quote Rabbi Meir, the student. Yinei Shalama Torah Maacher is because he studied Torah from Acher and no one else did. Acham Rabbi Avo until Rabbi Avo said to Elio, My Ichpas Lei, what do you care? Egos Matzah Birer Esa Ocha the Zarak is a Psolus. He found a nut or a fruit. He ate the fruit and he threw out the seed. What's wrong with that? Why can't we take the good and discard the bad? Famous question when a rabbi becomes embroiled in scandal and wrote Svarim, can you learn the Svarim or must you not? It was one famous instance of so evil, and Rev and Rev Aaron Lichtenstein was involved with, with calling him out and getting in trouble. And um, and he passed him that you can put his Svarim on your shelf, but don't take them off your shelf. I love this, Ralph. I used to listen to his Shurim every week, it was the most amazing thing in the world. And when, when this came out, I stopped listening. It was, it was so heartbreaking. It was, the person was so, he used his Torah as manipulative, you know, so his Torah was tainted. His Torah was twisted. Um, but it's hard to know when you have ideas in your head. Like, there's certain shirim I know um, that, like, the ideas came from him. You know, I have all those files on my computer, you know. It's very, it's hard. So it's hard to, to disentangle the good from the bad. But the mayor knew how to do that. The mayor knew how to, how to extract the good. So... The, uh, so Rapinkus writes that when that when the Taina came to Ilya and Avi, Rabbi Avo said, what, what do you have on Rabbi Meir? Rabbi Meir knew how to take the good. And a Kaddish Baruch agreed. It's a Mikanbe of Davar Vishem, Rabbi Meir. And now, when, from now forward, we're going to quote things in Rabbi Meir's name. Anytime it's a, an Acher Torah, Rabbi Meir gets quoted. And Ayin Sham, Hare Davalpi, Shatana Yamiti. Even though the claim was true, Yes, God knew that Rabbi Meir was right in learning the Torah and discarding the bad. And it was very hard to do that. But he had to hear from Rabbi Avahu. God is very particular with righteous people, like the edge of a hair, very fine actions. And Hashem says, I'll judge Moshe Rabbeinu much harsher, much harsher than I judge you and I. The Hanina heard about what happened to the the, door, the children of of uh, the, the the well digger of Nechunya Chofer Asichin, and he told it to a Kadosh Baruch Hu. Oila Tfilas L'Shiskim by Kadosh Baruch Yado. The prayers worked. Kim Chemeis B'Chanina, but when Chanina died, the prayers no longer worked. Lo Yamish Yashmiya Daber Chazar Daber Shikol Kolim Bonis Kamatayna. So what happened was like this. Here was here was the guy who dug wells. His name was Nechunya Chofer Asichin. And his daughter fell in a well and came Rabbi, ne- Rabbi Hanina and said, how can that be? And Hashem said, you're right. And she was rescued. And then he died. And then the son of the well digger 
died of thirst and nobody was there to make the claim before God. And what happened? You needed someone, says Rapinkus, to make the claim. So now we return back to our original question. Why does Rabbi Mayer need someone to claim on his behalf? Why does, why does, um, why does Nechun Yochal Versicha need someone to make the claim if God knows the claim? Um, so this is a lot of material we just covered in like sort of a, a it's a mouthful here, but I, I want to stop here in the middle of this concept, but we're going to stop the Chenu Inyan. So we're on the, we're on the bottom of page Kuf Tes Vav, and in the English we're on 216 in the middle, the bottom of page 216. I think maybe you're in the middle of this paragraph. Page 216, right. The Chayn That's what, Now he's going to explain what Chilo oh, is based on this concept. Okay, so we'll stop here. Everyone should have a wonderful day. A happy Hanukkah. It does seem scary, though, that we have to...